Hey there, awesome physics students. Let's talk about angular motion again. The last time when we talked about angular motion, we had I'd left you hanging on this question of the track and field uh, runners and whether it'd be an advantage to run on the inside of the track rather than the outside of the track with all, with all things being equal. Well, of course, if you think about this with respect to the angular, uh, the arc length formula here, when you travel on the inside track here, you're traveling through a smaller uh, arc length because the radius of the circle that you trace out is smaller. And so, of course, it's going to be an advantage to be on the inside track because uh, you're traveling a smaller distance. Track and field people are no dummies, and so what they do is if you start here, the next outer lane will, will appear to have what is a head start, even though it's not a head start. Uh, it's actually just stagger, they stagger the start distances so that when the runners run around and they finish all at the same place, all of the runners will run the same distance so that it's fair. So uh, this, there is a, not an advantage, at least from a distance perspective, to running the inside or outside lane. So let's think about uh, another, uh, let's come back to our knee, or our leg rotating through some angle and let's follow the motion of our foot. So our foot uh, travels down here through this arc length at the bottom. And let's create a motion diagram for your foot. So here your foot starts here and then goes here. These are equal time intervals. And we can think about the, um, arc, the arc length that it has traveled through, the displacement between these bottom two points here. And of course, as this is happening, there's going to, this, this is traveling on part of a circle with radius r. And there's a, uh, uh, an, an angle that's, that's being uh, displaced here, or an angular displacement, delta theta, that we're traveling through as we achieve this arc length or this displacement at the bottom. So how are these all related? Well, they're, they're related through the same relationship here. That is, um, delta s is equal to r, which is the same in all these cases, it's, that does not change, times delta theta. Now, the reason for doing it this way is we want to think about how do these things change with time, because we want to think about some sort of angular velocity here. If I want to think about how these change with time, I can just divide these by the time interval over which they occur. So let me do that. Now, this quantity here, delta s over delta t, that's just the displacement over the time. That's the regular old-fashioned velocity. Um, r is just r. That hasn't changed with time. What I have here is delta theta over delta t. That's angular velocity. And so I'm going to use the Greek letter omega. That's a lowercase omega. It looks like a w, but it's not a w. It's an omega. And because angular displacement has units of radians, and I'm dividing by time, this is going to have units of radians per second. Now, why would I want to invent a, unit, a confusing Greek lettered term like omega, angular velocity, when I have a perfectly good thing like velocity, regular velocity, to use? The reason is this. If we think about our foot moving, and then we compare that to how our knee moves, between this time, over this time interval, our knee has moved from here to here. That's a much smaller distance. And because it's traveling a smaller distance in the same time as our foot, the velocity for our knee and our foot are going to be different. So those things are not the same. However, delta theta for our knee or our foot is the same. And because delta theta is the same, that means omega for points on your leg, as long as you keep it rigid, will be the same for all points uh, on a rigid object that's rotating through some angle. And so when we think of rotation to simplify the, the motion, we just have to think about or understand the angular velocity for that whole thing. And that tells us about how the whole thing is moving, as long as it's moving rigidly and doesn't flex, like you can't bend your knee, for example, while you're doing this. All right, so that's why we'd want to use omega. Now, what's a, a practical use? So how can we use this to understand maybe a question you've had for a long time? This is a question I've had for a long time, and I finally answered it, um, well, it's been a while now, but uh, when I was older. So you're traveling in a car at constant speed on the highway, and you're a little kid, and you look out the window, and uh, on the highway there's some grass 
right near the road and it appears to be flying past your car relative to you whereas you look uh, and you see these trees and the trees appear to be following your car so you ask this question why are the trees following us or why is the moon following us we can understand this in terms of angular velocity so think about the angle through which these if you're at the if you put the origin at the grass the angle through which the grass moves is huge compared to the angle through which the tree appears to move if you put the origin at the tree. So this is a very small angle, this is a huge angle. Why is that? Because the velocity they see is the same either way. Well the reason is because of this e equation right here. If the velocity is the same, the grass is at a huge, uh, excuse me, the, gra the tree is at a huge distance. And so its angular velocity is going to be really small. It appears to have no velocity relative to us at all. Whereas if you look at the grass, and it's the same velocity because it's the velocity of our linear velocity because it's the velocity of our car, the uh, distance to the grass is very small, and so the angular velocity has got to be enormous. And so it looks like the grass is flying past us, whereas it looks like the distant trees are not moving or they're moving with us. And so this is the connection between, um, this is why I said this uh, arc length formula is so important because it leads us directly to this expression which can help us understand all kinds of cool things.